sometimes it's hard to wake up in the morning, mind full of demons. I don't want to hear them anymore. Got me heartbroken, fine. So many babies screaming because they sing a destruction for they see a human being. for working class thoughts so the reason for me popping up here like this is to explain why i am releasing the um, blm and antifa one in a weird way <clears throat> it's set up like a bonus features okay so for those that don't know uh, when i do a regular episode often i will put uh, bonus features at the end of it often to explain um, or to show different reference points that uh for the episode so i've already done one uh, that i titled modern racism and reverse racism before um actually a long time ago which actually went into uh black lives matter and then i also already did one on antifa uh so in a way this bonus features is more like just an extra feature of that episode i guess 
um, because I didn't really want to sit here and go too much farther into both of those movements, other than to show what they're actually about through their own mouths. Okay, so here's the deal. <clears throat> BLM is a socialist LGBT-driven organization. Um, they can say whatever they want to say. They've been active for a long time. And they have been anti-white. They have been strong supporters of Islam, strong supporters of LGBT, and open about their Marxism beliefs since their very start, which was a while ago. And Antifa, they just, they're just chaotic. They used to be just on the computer until, like, recently. So it just seems like out of the middle of nowhere, they're everywhere, right? Like, you cannot turn on your TV or drive to work without hearing something about BLM and Antifa. Um, now, a, a lot of liberal companies are reported, as well as state and federal employees, are having to set through what they're calling a race training video on race relations. Um, <clears throat> at least from what I've heard. And um, that's just the point to where it's getting to. And that's why I decided to structure a video showing actually what they're actually about. Because you hear on social media often people fighting or bickering back and forth in comment sections or different blogs or whatever, mind you. Just bickering. Like, that's not what they're about. That's not what they stand for. That's not what's actually going on. That's just lies. That's just speculation. That's just misheard. That's just this. We've heard it all. <clears throat> So what's actually fact, though? Have they actually ever been open about the fact that they stand strongly for socialism? Um, is there any truth to that? Is there any val uh, valid, you know, valid point to it? Um, are they really against uh, Caucasians? You know what I mean? Uh, the new Black Panther Party as well. Uh, well... Throughout the years, if you've been paying attention, they've been pretty open about all their standpoints on this. So it's really not hard to speculate. Nowadays, because of all the exposure, they're trying to change up what they stand for, at least in the public eye. Although some people have said openly or whatever on different blogs or different threads or going live or whatever. But yes, they do stand for socialism. Yes, they do stand for LGBT. They were started by two feminists actually considered radical, radical uh, leftist feminists is what they were started by. Um, and they were actually started in a, in a foreign country, if my memory serves me right. I'm pretty sure. Um, and they have been very extreme about their beliefs in socialism from the very start. In fact, um, I found a video of a Zoom conference between BLM their top people and the Young Socialist Society for a college here in America. And I included the whole Zoom conference for you guys to hear because they're pretty candid about everything. And then naturally, I'm going to include uh, video clips of them actually slipping up on news segments, uh, protests, um, and all of that. You know what I mean? Um, the Antifa one is going to be the exact same way. You're going to see them actually admitting stuff for what they stand for from their own mouth. So, you know what I mean? It's out there. <clears throat> All of it's out there and easy to find. But it's just I've already done, like, two episodes that were pretty long about it in detail about where they come from. However, a lot of people still don't understand what Antifa is actually about. How they actually operate. See, they're nothing like the original organization. Yes, there is some valid truth to what they're screaming on social media that you guys don't know anything about the history of our movement because we're actually quite an old movement. Yes, that is true. But if you understand history, then you realize that the current Antifa is nothing like the original Antifa was. So they're dead wrong in all of that. They're nothing more than just, well, looters and destroyers. I mean, even BLM themselves, like their top leaders, have come out and said recently that Antifa is the reason why all the violence is going on, that everything is peaceful until they show up. They're doing nothing but stealing their movement. This is actually coming from BLM top leaders. So 
that's a fact. Um, if you don't know, you should know because, I mean, they've been posting it all over their Twitter accounts and all over their Facebook accounts and all that, that these people come in and mess up everything that we're standing for because they just want straight chaos and we're trying to do a good thing and they're just ruining it. Even though they're, even though they're fighting for socialism, they're saying we're trying to do a good thing and Antifa shows up and they just straight up just cause chaos and ruin it. And that's in fact, that's what they do. Um, a lot of people want to know, is there any truth to Soros actually funding Antifa? I believe Soros is funding Antifa, and I believe there's enough evidence on that. Um, I couldn't find the article that I was actually trying to find that came across a while ago, which is a business article that actually said how Soros was actually excited about world business leaders finally willing to sit down and talk about a one-world economy and a one-world system government that would be controlled by UN heading up the, they would be like the government headquarters, basically. So all of this stuff has actually been trickling out off and on, but, you know, who do you, who do you believe? I mean, like, yeah, I did see the article, but <coughs> even then when I saw it, it's like, how legit do you know what it is? But then there was a video on YouTube, um, it's actually in the older episode. I included a lot of the same information that I'm talking about in the original Antifa episode that I actually did. Um, but they're actually chanting, Soros, where's our money? Soros, where's our money? So, yes, I do believe they're actually funded by George Soros and other wealthy people, mainly Democratic, to cause chaos and a breakdown of those communities. That's literally what I think is going on. Because I think that's the only way that you can sit there and explain how is it that when Antifa shows up, there's pallets of bricks, cement bricks, they're getting funded for equipment all of a sudden. Um, they got all these little devices. Um, they're showing up right about a certain time. You know what I mean? Every single time. Like BLM is saying, like, we've been protesting and <coughs> as soon as like it gets to a certain time like mainly afternoon time they start showing up around the afternoon time and around night time they just disrupt every single thing <laughs> and i think that they're actually paid to do that i think they're funded to do that and i think there might be enough information out there to actually prove that um so that's what this is all then about because there's just so many people so many relationships <clears throat> of all kinds whether it be business relationships whether it be personal relationships, even marriages, are envy over this whole BLM and Antifa stuff, um, Donald Trump and Joe Biden stuff. You know what I mean? Because that's what you're seeing all the time. Like I said earlier, you can't turn on your TV and you can't um, turn on the radio without hearing something about it. <coughs> to me, that's called programming. You know what I mean? After so many hours of hearing that on end, you start thinking about it more and more and more and more and more. Um, but again, they're trying to say one thing, but actually doing the opposite. From what I understand, BLM has even been demanding towards the Democrats that's been supporting them lately. Like their top, founder, their top founders are saying, no, you're going to do this or you're going to do that. That's what is actually going on from my understanding. So I think that their movement's actually being exposed for what they're really about. Now, that's why... In the last episode, you see me say, um, do I think that BLM is a good thing? And you hear me say, I think that the cause for the protest that majority of the people jumped on was a just cause other than defunding the police. Um, once they said, therefore, defunding the police and defunding the military and... <coughs> canceling out all these television shows and canceling out all these clothing lines and once they said all that then i was like you know what nah you've lost me on every single front that you're trying to say i no longer have interest in hearing anything that you try to say um because it's no longer about the causes that you try to say um and that's evident because your top leaders are, like I said, being demanding towards Democrats that have been supporting them. And they're covering up money trails 
Like they don't want to acknowledge where they're actually spending money at. So that shows a cover up effort right there. Um, like when they first started, they were wide open about, yes, we stand for LGBT. Yes, we're against. Yes, we stand for Islam. And yes, um, they're socialists. And yes, we're for the uh, we're for overthrowing the uh, United States capitalism as we know it. They were all candid about that originally. But once the protest started, everything switched up all of a sudden. Right. So all these years you have been saying one thing, but all of a sudden you expect everybody to buy that you're just about this. No, because that's the reason why you're still trying to incorporate the other things that you were about all those years ago. That's why you're still saying you want defunding the police. That's why you're saying that you want to defund the government. That's why you're saying you want to cancel all these shows. That's why you're saying all this other stuff, because again, you're all about socialism. You're all about that type of thought process. So that's, that's starting to show through now. Um, and I, and like I said, throughout this whole 2020 um, year uh, chaos that I'm doing, I'm hoping to show you guys that through the actual footage and through the words of the actual people, you're going to be able to hear it for yourselves. So it won't just be my opinion. It won't just be some Facebook blog you're reading. It won't just be some random article that you're seeing. It's actual, it's their actual members talking openly about what they're standing for. That way you have that to go on. So they can say one thing, but you're like, nah, because that ain't what you said before. How is it this all of a sudden? Do you get what I'm saying? And mind you this too. Let me say this. How is it that you're saying you're for the African-American community on every single front, right? But yet, all this death is occurring. You've said nothing about Planned Parenthood. You've said nothing about the black-on-black crime. Every single time, even recently, that there's been on a black-on-black shooting, BLM has been voiceless, not uttering a word. Neither has the Democratic Party that you're hearing about either. Not a word. Not a word, you know, so that tells me everything I need to know about your movement right there. The only time you guys show up is that there's a white cop shooting somebody or a white person shooting somebody. That's the only time you guys show up. If it's just one of your own, you don't even show up. Hell, if it's even a uh, Latino, you guys don't show up. So, I mean, you guys, your, your actions are speaking for what your movement is actually about, is, I, is what I'm getting at, as far as I see it. Um, and as far as Antifa goes, they're a joke, as far as I'm concerned. Uh, they seem to be very bad in large groups. Like, all the footage I see, it's like when they get a whole lot of people together, that's when everything pops off. You get what I'm saying? But I've seen a lot of other footage of whenever there's an open Antifa person by themselves, their true color show. Do you get what I'm saying? You're going to see that for yourself in the bonus features. You're going to see numerous Antifa members, both in groups. And I also wanted to show you guys how they act by themselves. But I wanted to go farther than that, too. I wanted to include what their members are actually saying from their own mouths. And I wanted to show you guys what the politicians really feel about them as well. So within all these bonus features, you're going to be able to see all of that. You're going to be able to see what their members are like together. You're going to be able to see what they're like by themselves. You're going to be able to hear what they're actually standing for from their own mouths. And yeah, naturally, I'm going to show the other side too. Um, there's a lot more uh, bigger podcasters that I've been speaking about Antifa as well for a long time. I mean, I, yeah, I did my episode about a year and a half to two years ago on both BLM and Antifa. Uh, and naturally, with the, uh, when I said the BLM one, I had titled it Modern Racism as well as Reverse Racism, two different episodes where I talked about BLM and both of them. Um, I, went, I went from the psychological approach with it, but I feel like nowadays um, it's – they're doing enough for you to actually see what they're actually about. Um, and like I said, as far as the Democrat Party goes, I think that uh, they're fracturing apart. And I think that's because their true colors are showing as well. So what I'm getting at is both that party, the BLM movement, Antifa, 
their true colors for what they're uh, what they're actually fighting for, I think it's starting to show through. And my personal opinion is, it's about socialism. I think that's the radical new form of government that they're constantly talking about. And uh, as far as the BLM movement goes, they're pretty open about it. Um, Antifa people uh, on their streams, I've heard, on their actual streams that they do, I've heard they're pretty open about it. But like I said, I actually know somebody who is open about being part of uh, be, uh, being part of Antifa. I'm not going to say her name, but uh, I have talked to her off and on over the past, hell, I don't know, about a year, I think. But I try to get her to actually come on and answer the questions to defend her organization because originally she tried to say, you know, I think that if you actually heard what we're actually about, you know, you might change your mind about us. And I was like, no, I don't think so. I really don't think so. Um, and the reason for that is because I am very much pro-America. I am pro-United States flag. I am pro-United States Constitution. I am, I am pro-America. So I don't, like I said, I didn't think so. Um, and then I, I asked her, I was like, you know, do you think you'd become on and willing to talk about your, uh, about your movement that you're so strongly stand for? And she did. She politely declined. So, like I said, I'm not going to use no names or say anything like that out of respect. Um, and that's a personal decision on my part. Like I said in that last video, I'm not going to do that. Because I understand that a lot of these issues are very much hot button topics for most people that they just don't want. They don't want to be seen talking about it or being open about how they really feel about it. And I understand that. So with that said, I think I'm going to cut this short. This is meant to just be a um, explanation video, because like I said, I've been dropping hints about the BLM one. I've been dropping hints about the Antifa one because there's just so much I I put in them because I really wanted to show you guys what they're true, what they're truly about. I wanted to show you guys what they're truly about from their own actions and from their own words. Um, you know what I mean? So you can take it from there, however you feel about it, but you know, Oh, and, uh, you guys can expect at least, uh, two more videos. Cause I wanted to do one more interview. I got to get a hold of them. Um, there's about two to three more people. Um, if they haven't changed their mind, um, that said that they want to be able to do the episode. So you guys have that to looking forward to. And, uh, naturally being a working class thoughts podcast show, uh, you guys can expect a, either a bonus feature episode where, our, um, I could pop up on it like I did on this one. Um, but it's going to be showing footage of the actual protest and the riots, but I didn't want to just show it in a negative way. So I'm going to include what they're, what they're deeming pro and positive. It's another squirrel behind me. Sorry. Um, but so you're going to, in that video, whenever you see the protests and riots, you're going to be able to see the good side and you're going to be able to see the bad side. So you're going to see the true, the, the ugly, the good and ugly, you know what I'm saying? Um, and you can expect that throughout this whole series. That's been my goal. I wanted to show you guys the true side of it. So if you watch the whole thing, I know they're really lengthy. Um, and the reason for them being lengthy is I didn't want to cut them short. Whatever I was, whatever I was putting it together, I didn't want to do that whole dubbing thing or clipping it short. I wanted to show it as what I saw it. So what I saw is what your guys is, what you guys are going to see so that you guys can formulate your own opinion from there. And with that said, like I just said, you can expect another episode where people are going to be answering the questions like you just did before on top of the other one that I was just talking about. Um, and if you're interested in being on the show to be able to answer those questions, uh, feel free to be able to comment in it. Uh, you can contact me at the work at my working class thoughts blog page, which is really a Facebook business page. Uh, you can use the messenger there and contact me through there. Um, you could comment on any one of the videos and I'll be able to get a hold of you that way as well. You can get a hold of me on Instagram as well. Um, as for the rest of them, Snapchat, I, 
Snapchat, I didn't like. Oh, you can get a hold of me on Twitter. But, like, Snapchat, I didn't like. I'm not going to get into that. I think I've talked about it on a couple videos. It's just, maybe it's just my age. I don't know. But Snapchat, TikTok, all those, all those, I just, I just can't get into them. I've tried. I've downloaded them and I've toyed around with them, but I just can't seem to gauge an interest in it. So those are the ways you can get a hold of me. If you're interested on being on the show to be able to answer the questions again, let me know. It doesn't matter if you support Donald Trump. It doesn't matter if you support Joe Biden. It doesn't matter if you're pro-BLM. It doesn't matter if you're pro-Antifa. It doesn't matter if you're anti-BLM or um, anti-Antifa. Really, that was the whole point of the questions. I wanted everybody to be able to jump on here and be able to express their viewpoints. You know what I'm saying? That way... It's something we're putting together you feel so strongly about. You could actually appear on the show and be like, that's not what we're actually doing, you know, and explain to us where we're wrong. You know what I'm saying? Feel free to. I've sent out that offer so many times over the past month to two months because, like I said, I've already done those other episodes. I've sent out that offer so many times. Um, But again, if you if you want to, like, honestly, just comment on the thread or on a video. Uh, get a hold of me on the Facebook uh, business page, Working Class Thoughts, or um, Instagram, Working Class Thoughts, and I will get in touch with you, and we could actually arrange something or a way for you to be able to do it. And this is offer is for everybody across the globe. So even if you're um, overseas, we can still figure out something. Nowadays with um, streaming and um, video services, uh, you could be able to do interviews everywhere. So be able to get a hold of me. And uh, we'll figure out a way to get you on the show. And you can actually defend your stance. And if you believe like I do, and you want to appear on the show, hey, man, appear on the show, and you can still answer the questions and explain your personal viewpoint on it, too. And if you're one of the other ones, if you're a leftist and one of the other ones that feel like there really is a summer of love and everybody's taking everything out of context, then like I said, we, I've sent out the offer, and I'm offering it again. Uh, get a hold of me, and you can you can answer the questions that way. Whenever that way, by you answering their questions, that's why I designed those questions the way I did. By you answering their questions, we can gauge how you really feel um, about all of the about everything all combined within that series of questions. So, again, this has been Mike for Working Class Thoughts. Everybody have a good day. Again, again, I can't stress this enough. Um, BLM and Antifa is coming up right behind these two. The I'm going to release those tonight. And again, I know they're lengthy, but they are very informative because you hear it from the BLM's leader's mouth. You hear it from the Antifa members' own mouths. You hear it from their people's mouths, from their leader's mouths. That's why they're actually worth watching. But, hey... Again, I put it together, so naturally I'm going to say that, right? But no, seriously, there's a lot of good information on it. And that doesn't matter if you're positive or if you're negative on the situation. However you look at it, I'm telling you, there's good stuff in there. Because um, I don't I don't talk about her too often, but my wife being the type of person she is, she's like, make sure that you show all views of points and it's not just your viewpoint. So that's why I've structured all these bonus features the way I did. I want everybody to be able to see the good and the bad so that you can, you, you know what I mean? That way everybody has an understanding. No, this is what it's really about. You know what I'm saying? Now I have a strong stance on my personal beliefs and there's enough evidence supporting my belief. So if you think I'm wrong and you want to appear on the show, like I said, feel free to. And if you think I'm right and you want to appear on the show, do that. And if you just want to, if you just want a chance to be able to appear on the show and answer the series of questions so that everybody can understand your personal viewpoint on it, then by all means, do that. I'm telling you, the questions are designed. If you watch that episode, you can see what I mean. The questions are designed to where everybody can get a chance to explain their viewpoint. But again, this has been Mike for Working Class Thoughts. Peace, love, and good vibes, everybody. Everybody have a good afternoon and have a good night. Uh, look forward to the next uh, the next uh, series of videos. That's going to be on the protests and the riots. And again, I'm going to show the good and the bad side of it. So everybody has a chance to see what they're actually about. Again, Michael Rick Class Thoughts. Peace.